now. He is joining us from the Australian Stock Report, live from our Melbourne studio. Chris Conway, thanks for joining us. Well, when you agreed to come on, we didn't know that this was coming, although it has been relatively well flagged that we would be looking at at least uh, a downgrade in outlook, if not an actual downgrade in credit rating. Any surprises that SNP has chosen now to do this, even before we've seen who the next government will actually be? Good afternoon, Carrington. No, I don't think there's any surprise that they're doing it now. They probably would have had this baked into the cake well and truly before uh, you know, the unknown outcome of the election was in play. Um, as you said, they flagged it for a while. This shouldn't be a, any great surprise to anyone out there. We continue to run fairly strong uh, budget deficits um, and you know, the, the, the lack of result from the election mm. was maybe the final icing on the cake. But like I said, I think that would have been baked in before uh, you know, we were in the midst of not knowing who was going to govern our country. So no, I don't think any great surprises. There'll be a knee-jerk reaction in the Aussie dollar. Uh, obviously the Australian market has pulled back a bit. I mean, this, this news dropped as I was walking to the studio, so I haven't had a great deal of time to process it, yes. other than hearing what you said. Um, but I don't think it's going to have too much impact long term, given that it was flagged. Well, we have seen the immediate aftermath was the selling off of the Australian dollar, but also a sell off in uh, the Australian market. Although it should be pointed out, we're still in positive territory. How, how big an impact generally would you say that ratings agencies chatter about the Australian economy but in, and also their actions to either downgrade the outlook or, or actually downgrade do have on the way that investors assess the value of different stocks? Can we expect a bigger impact, do you think, as the afternoon goes on? Or do you think that people take it all with a grain of salt these days? No, I think they, they tend to take it all with a grain of stock, salt. I mean, again, I heard you in the, in the, in the lead-up and it was one thing I was thinking as well is that we're still one of the very few countries in the world that has a triple A rating, whether it be positive, stable or negative. So it's moved one minor notch down from stable to negative. Um, it, ha it will have an impact on the Aussie dollar. Maybe some people are going to think about how they treat companies with uh, offshore earnings, whether they are accumulating or um, shedding them from their portfolio. Um, but ultimately, no, I don't think it's going to have a great impact on the equity market. Okay, let's turn our attention to maybe some of the, the more specific sectors that we could be looking at the moment. I, I'm interested in your take on, on the oil price generally, but also I know that you're looking at Santos. You think it might be a, a buying opportunity at this point. Talk us through this. Is this a mac as a macro player? Are you believing that oil does have somewhere to run or at least it's, it's, it's bottom out for the short term? Or is this a Santos specific story? No, so it's more an overarching um, oil related theme, uh, Carrington, rather than it is Santos specific, although Santos, as it is fairly widely known, is very, very highly leveraged to the uh, oil price and one of the stocks in Australia that is likely to benefit most from an from a increasing oil price. But no, the thematic is more the, um, the macro in the sense that um, the supply demand and demand dynamics in the oil market are changing and continue to change. Um, we've seen fairly consistent draws in, um, in the US recently um, with regard to stockpiles. Rig count in the US still remains uh, well below where it needs to be to sustain um, production at current demand levels. Now obviously that's just US centric um, but you know there's the ongoing talk with regards to Saudi Arabia and uh, the other OPEC nations and what they might do. So I think now there's a floor under oil. Mm. Um, I see 44 to 46 as a buying opportunity. Any time it's dipped back there recently, it has spiked back up towards the 50 handle. But I think we ultimately get above that level. And again, it's because, you know, unlike the iron ore market where, you know, production still far outstri uh, outstrips demand, there are changing dynamics in the oil market. Now, it might take until early 2017 for that market to move back into equilib equilibrium. But of course, markets are forward looking, so they're going to see that. And I think the oil price will continue to rally off the back of that. Uh, we, we have just finished a financial year. One of, my one of the most interesting takeouts for me was that if you were in energy last year, you got hammered. It was the worst performing sector on the Australian market. Do you think a lot of investors who have been burnt so hard by, or burnt so painfully, I should say, uh, last year by playing the energy space are feeling reluctant to jump back in at this point. And does that potentially also help the argument to, about why it would make sense to, to buy in if other people are potentially undervaluing it? Yeah, look, I think, uh, Carrington, um, uh, investors who are, have been holding oil and maybe even are still holding Woodside, which really hasn't participated in the oil rally at all would be very reluctant to, to jump back in. But, you know, we have seen oil down as low as $30. It's now back in the 45 to 50 range. Um, so it's a good rally that we've seen uh, in the last, well, three months, really. Um, and I think that rally will be extended. So, 
you know, that's a bit of a psychology question that you're asking me. You know, people need to put the losses and, 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 and not worry about what's mm. happened in the past aside because if you spend too much time fo focusing on what has happened and lamenting missed trades or bad decisions, well, you miss out on the opportunities that are right in front of your face. So, uh, like I said, reiterate that I think oil's got further upside to come. Um, I think it's, again, when you're directly contrasted to the, the iron ore market, I think things are starting to change, whereas, whereas in iron ore, um, you know, we still have the major producers around the world uh, producing at levels that far outweigh demand at this point in time. So I, I expect that market to be um, structurally oversupplied for an extended period. So that's that's the contrast with, uh, say, the oil market and the uh, iron ore market. OK, so you're feeling positive towards Santos. Let's look at the opposite side. Tapcord Holdings, you're feeling pessimistic. It seems to be down not only to, to the situation, or well, mainly down, down to the political situation that we're perhaps seeing in Australia, the rise of Nick Xenophon, a man who came to power uh, in large part in South Australia, or came to prominence, I should say, uh, in, in large part because of his anti-pokey stance. We know that he's, uh, he, he wants to target problem gambling. Also, there is some breaking news that although we're about to hear, we believe, uh, here in New South Wales, for example, Mike Baird, which I know you won't be on top of, which is an announcement in regards to the greyhound industry following uh, the inquiry that we're seeing um, into the greyhound industry. There may be big changes there, potentially closing up. We're going to wait to see what that happens. It's happening in the next five minutes or so. But there does seem to be so much uh, controversy, so much potential changes in this industry. Are you just staying well away from all gambling stocks? Yeah, well, so we're actually uh, actively short uh, Tabcorp. Um, and the, the major reason for that is, yes, Nick Xenophon uh, and, and Andrew Wilkie's power that they wield now is independence in um, what is a very, or well, going to be likely, a very, very finely balanced parliament. So anyone who wants to get anything done in Canberra is going to have to make deals with these guys and given that Xenophon's platform was all about pokey reform he's going to play that card over and over and over and over again. So it's likely to have a negative impact on, on Tabcorp, on Aristocrat, although that stock, um, the management have done an exceptional job there and, and I wouldn't actively bet against them. Uh, Woolworths potentially with their 75% mm. uh, holding in ALH, uh, I think they have more pokies in Australia than some casinos do on the floor in, in Vegas. Um, so I think it's 12,000 throughout the country. Um, and AGI as well, although that would be a, a difficult stock to short. So, yeah, if you're not in them, don't buy them. Um, and even be actively looking to short them like we are with Tabcorp. OK, well, let's turn to one of the, the sectors that has run pretty hard of late, which is gold. It, it, the yellow metals, both of them, both gold and copper have been doing pretty well of late, but gold for, for most of this year has been on a bit of a, it's a pretty impressive looking chart at the moment. What, what are you seeing though, as far as how this has played out? Australian miners in particular have run really hard. That's both because of, both because of the rising price of gold, but also they've managed to, to pull a lot of costs out of their business. Their margins have been improving, but so have their stock prices. Is it starting to look frothy to you? Yeah, it is looking uh, looking frothy to me. Um, the gold price, and indeed, you know, uh, as you mentioned, Australian gold miners. We were in Northern Star um, until recently, when it went parabolic, and a couple of indicators started flashing up, suggesting that it was overbought. Um, but yeah, I'm worried about the gold price, not because I don't think that it, it, it can it can't keep going, but because it's becoming an overcrowded trade. Um, and if we suddenly get some change in expectations as to what the Fed is going to do with interest rates, maybe off the back of you know, the non-farm payrolls on Friday, mm. well, that, um, that uh, uh, sentiment towards gold can shift very quickly. And it, again, given that it is a, an overcrowded trade, it could potentially be quite a violent shift. So, look, there's a, there's a couple of ways to play it depending on your time frames. If you're a trader, I guess you, know, you keep riding the momentum until the, until the tide turns. Um, you can put your stop loss in and, and you'll get busted out when you get busted out. If you're medium to long term, I think that overcrowded um, element needs to be a fairly big piece of your analytical pie. And you'd be worrying that, like I said, a shift in sentiment um, could see that unwind pretty quickly and pretty violently. OK, well, we are going to be watching that. As I said, we are going to be watching to see what happens with this. The Greyhound uh, racing, it looks like New South Wales will be closing it. So if you're short on Tabcorp uh, is in place already, that could be also beneficial to you. I'll leave you there. Thank What's you so much for your insults. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your insights, not insults.